This is a big game. Uh, Wisconsin right now is playing as good as anybody in the country. They could beat anybody in the country. You can quote me on that. They can beat anybody home or away in the country right now. We still feel that loss actually from two weeks ago, however many, how long ago it was, but uh, we actually been carrying that that fire and passion inside us at that L and they stormed the court. So that's all that's the last thing I remember about leaving Wisconsin is the whole students and everybody stormed the court on us. So that's that's kind of like memory we carry with us now. We grew as a team, we got better as a team and now we'll be ready for their game plan and uh, our whole team's actually motivated. We all want this game so bad. <laughs> right mid post half drop step up and under and over the front of the rim he's perfect from the floor it's a five point lead for the visitor simpson a strong drive hook shot off the window drops good sets a screen for teskey or teskey sets a screen and a bounce pass a layup by teskey gives michigan the lead teskey with another field goal michigan leads at 18 17. delivers a dribble drive a scoop with the right hand on the left side of the glass and he laid it in 20 to 19, Michigan leads it. Half had it stolen by Simpson, two on one. He's got Matthews up ahead, feeds him on a bounce, and Matthews will lay it in. 22 21, Michigan in front to Davis. Hot step in the lane, dishes to half, turnaround hook shot, and it rattled down. And he's got 14 points. Ford found an opening, drive blocked by Teske, his 51st of the year. Here comes Michigan in a gallop left to right pool, coast to coast, finger rolls it down. Matthews off the inbound, nails the jumper from the left baseline. 16 feet away, Charles Matthews has his second field goal. Ooh, out of you, Teske. Simpson down the middle of the lane, just floated up there, and Teske flushed it down for his 11th point, and Michigan leads by four again. Nine to shoot, 10 and a half to go in the game. He backs his way in, left mid post. Turn around, fade away from the baseline, is through. Yeah, that's patented Charles Matthews' jump shot here. Half goes to work, reverse layup, good, and a foul call. A dozen for the day, 10 in the second half. Bounce pass, Teske lays it up and in, and he's fouled. Big time play by Charles Matthews, and a big time finish by Teske. Matthews with a drive, and it's stopped. Boy, he's getting what he wants, Terry. He's able to find a way to deck it and drive it to half. Half runs into Matthews. Up and under, left-handed shot off the window and down. It's back to a one-point Michigan lead. Simpson with a beautiful reverse layup. And Michigan's lead is back to three with 3.40 to go. Six to shoot, rocks the dribble against Reavers. A couple of more times, behind the back. Now a hop step in the lane. Fade away from 14, got it! Poole leaves half in the dust, quickly into the front court. alley -oop. Livers dams it down! It's going to end 61-52. Michigan stays atop the Big Ten. That's not bad, right? Desmond, you had a few noontime wins, didn't you? A couple of them. Yeah, a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, a lot of them, like 50 of them or something. <laughs> yes, sir. So at, at any rate, I'm just really proud of you, and it, let's let's celebrate. Let's no, nobody think about the next game or anything. Just enjoy your time with your family and your friends today. You really deserve this. You worked really hard, and you fought through it. Nobody, we were missing open shots, and everybody fought through the adversity. Everybody did. You turned. What we've done before, we missed a shot. We see it on defense, right? It's like the quarterback throwing an interception, and then he's got to play safety. It's hard to do that, right? But you had you turned around and you got that done for us. I'm so proud of it, right? And we just keep it going. These people are packing this place, and they love you, right, because who you are. 
This was very big to stay atop Big Ten um, in first place and also um, just kind of getting that revenge. I mean, they beat us earlier in the season, and so to so get them back, especially on our home court, protect our home court, um, it's very big. They stopped our undefeated season, and uh, of course we wasn't we wasn't gunning for that, but we wanted to win every game that we step on the floor, and they was the ones that gave us that first one of the season, so it had a sour taste in our mouth. Going into the game against Wisconsin, you had just two losses. You weren't going to get a second shot at Iowa until the Big Ten tournament, so you get a second look at Wisconsin. How much did redemption factor into the game against the I Badgers? think a little bit. You know, our kids are they are not used to losing. We've been blessed over, you know, go all the way back to last February. There's only like three losses in a year. Yeah. Just since Feb I think it was February 5th or 6th. So in one calendar year, there's been three losses. And so it hits us hard. We just didn't feel, feel we played very well, and our kids were driven to go out and get it done. How important were these numbers? 17 fouls in the first meeting against Wisconsin, 9 in the second meeting, 17 turnovers, 16 turnovers in the first meeting with the Badgers, and yet only 5. Yeah, th those are the most compelling numbers that I looked at when the, mat when the game was over, Matt, that you know, we didn't let them get to the foul line, and more importantly, while we're still developing our, our bench, the biggest question that I get all the time, we got to keep the six, seven best players on the floor until we develop it. And they will develop, right? And then the turnovers, you don't get many possessions against Wisconsin. It's a low possession game. So if you throw it away 16 times or you charge four times like we did in that game, it, you don't have a whole lot you can do to try and beat them. You have no chance at beating Wisconsin if you turn, if you turn the ball over and you put them to the foul line early. All right, you mentioned John Teske. What did he prove to you in elevating his game against a preseason All-American like Ethan yeah. Happ? He, here's, the biggest, here's the biggest takeaway I had. That he did not play well at the beginning. Hap was was just you know have it, it just eat him up early in the game. John also missed two layups, and then the second half he hit a three, and everything changed after that. He was much more aggressive. He finished at the rim. I don't think I've ever seen him step across and get to the rim with his left hand like he did a couple times. Made his foul shots. That's something he's been like 50 percent on. Where that might have bothered him emotionally, how poorly he was playing, he wouldn't have bounced back back in the days. He just like said, "Okay, I got to play better," and he did. What did Charles Matthews do differently in the second half compared to the first half? He scored 16 of his 18 after the break. He just looked much more comfortable in handling their ball screen defense. He took it at them a little bit. Uh, he just he's got he's a high wire act, Matt, and he's not playing it at a high wire act. He's shooting everything on the way down, hmm. and he's trying to get fouled. And people today they wall up and they they don't foul you. And he's got to take it at people and go dunk on people and get to the foul line that way. And he's been working at that. But you get these habits, Matt, that you just can't even stop. You can't stop the habits, and we're trying to stop it. You know, either that or if he's in traffic, land on two, find the open man, pivot a couple of times. These are all things that he's working on. We've been working on, and he's getting better. We only got about, what, 15, 16 practices left in a yeah. whole bunch of games. We, we won't stop. We won't stop because I think we saw the results of the work we've been doing today. Later on, John Beeline's good friends from back home make their annual trip to Chrysler Center to root on the Wolverines. But up next, Michigan tries to stay perfect in the all-time series against Rutgers. I'll look back after this. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Gardner White. You'll overpay anywhere else. And by Buick GMC. Visit your Metro Detroit Buick GMC dealer for exceptional offers all month long. Our staff, our starters, our bench, all connected, just like we have four other road wins. Right? There was, and you look at all those road, road wins that we've had, tough environments everywhere. You went out, started punching, and didn't stop. Right? We learned so much this week. We learned so much about ourselves, but we, I think we also learned what winning basketball looks like. Let's get this win. Let's go. At Rutgers trying to wipe away a setback to Iowa last time out. They'll take on the Scarlet Knights here in Piscataway. Hesitates, drives baseline, bounce pass, far corner, Brasdakis for three. Yes! Second triple of the night for Ignis Brasdakis. And Michigan's in front, 8 4. Now pivots baseline, hook shot way over the basket, fouled up, too strong, rebounded by Simpson, floats it up ahead for Poole. Nice catch and jam! What a feed from Simpson to pull for the stuff to make it 13-6. Hesitates in a crossover dribble, takes it inside, now pulls it back out. Straight away three for Poole, got it! Matthews left mid post, backs his way in against McConnell. Keeps the shoulder alive, now turns and fires from the baseline and knocks it through from 14 feet away. 
Steve Peichel calls a timeout, and they lead it by 15 at Rutgers. A jab step, seven to shoot. Behind the back dribble, keeps it alive, three to shoot, takes it inside, hooks up off the window and down with one on the shot clock. It's 29-12 Michigan. Yeah, if you want to shatter a team's confidence, you yeah. keep throwing those up there with one second on the clock. <laughs> takes it to the free throw line, pocket pass intended for Teske, stolen by Johnson to Baker. Up the left side line, Mathis lays it over the front of the rim and it rolls through. Baker at the top of the arc, lost Simpson. Step back, fadeaway three, go! Geo Baker's first points of the night, and they pulled to within nine. 38 29, 17 to shoot. Now wiggles right side, no looks for Dakis. Drives baseline, lays it over the side of the rim and through. 5 0 spurt for Michigan. They lead it 43 29. Off the inbound. Rutgers get the jam for Shaquille Dorson. He's four, he's three for three from the floor. Six points, and just like that, Rutgers within seven. Sprints into the front court with Matthews. Matthews in the right corner. Doesn't look at him. Goes left wing pool. Wants the three. Got the three. Jordan Poole wearing a crown. Razdakis tries to answer with a three. Give me that. And that's how you pay him back. When, when, when you don't get the whistle, you don't hold your head, you come back down here and get the job done. Ten point Michigan lead. Simpson found an opening. Hook shot off the window and good. Xavier Simpson has double figures. Works against Dorson. Step back three on the way. Knocks it through. Oh, that was huge from Ignis Brasdakis. He's got 23. The final score will be Michigan 77. Rutgers 65, Michigan ranks seventh in the nation, making a statement here. Michigan's leaders and best are brought to you by Gardner White Furniture. Happy Big night for you in Piscataway for a lot of different reasons. How'd you feel walking into that locker room singing Happy Birthday? <laughs> or you're hearing Happy Birthday yeah, being yeah. sung. I was surprised because I know they knew it was my birthday, but they also know I'm, I'm just really not a big birthday guy. Yeah. So I put up with it, and it was good. And they're mad at me because I don't enjoy my birthday, and my wife's mad at me and my grandkids and everything. But it's just it's something, but it really felt good to just win it. You know, my, choose a win at Rutgers or my birthday. I'll take the win at Rutgers every day of my life, right? But it doesn't mean, shouldn't it mean something to you? Not not just because you came became Michigan's all time leader in Big Ten wins, but because I mean there is that closeness with this team with yeah. you. You talk about how close the players yeah. are. Many people get a sense those players are just as close, if not closer, with you. Well, you I, get that? I hope we have a good relationship. I, I I don't think I think there's other close pitchers that a lot of coaches that might even you know be closer. And there's a lot of coaches that are more distant. I hope I'm finding this happy medium where they know that I really love them and I care for them, but they also know that's one demanding guy now. He's not hes not here to be your ultimate friend of all time. He's here to make you a better basketball player. And I try to balance that, and that's who I am. There was a very special group of fans at the Wisconsin game, about 70 of Coach Beeline's closest friends and acquaintances from Lockport, New York. It started uh, John's last year at uh, Richmond, and we took, uh, we, I organized a bus trip down to St. Bonaventure. The trips continued when Coach moved to West Virginia and then Ann Arbor. The immense and loyal faction has been making an annual pilgrimage to visit Beeline in season for almost two decades, and they've witnessed some really good basketball. We kind of have a, a streak going. The last time I saw John lose a uh, regular season game was his first year at West Virginia. That year was 2002. The Mountaineers lost to eventual national champ Syracuse, and Beeline coach teams haven't lost since with the Lockport crew in attendance. 17 consecutive W's, a streak that defies logic. Or does it? He's a damn good coach. <laughs> you know, I'd have to say probably one of the best in the country, and uh, not just because he's a friend, just the way he uh, handles himself and handles everything. John appreciates his roots, so when some hometown friends and family come in, I, you know, I, I'm not saying he coaches better, but I, I think he looks forward to us coming down. 
The group continues to expand. Maintaining friendships is one thing, fostering them is another, something Coach and his band of basketball brothers have committed to over the years. It's just a great time. It's uh, the camaraderie of the, of the whole group. It's a great uh, great experience. But I think he really appreciates it. You know, he's a really a close-knit family guy, and I think that uh, he appreciates everybody coming down and getting together and, you know, just having fun. Almost as much fun as that suit. The group claims to be Beeline's good luck charm, and the stats certainly back that up. You know, Coach constantly stresses to his guys the importance of staying connected, and he certainly practices what he preaches. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Ed Kingerski. Ed, thanks. Every year your buddies come and watch you coach your team. How much does that mean to you? Because you had a slew of them, right? We had about yeah. 70, 70 to 80 this year. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's they they all come in. A, there was a there was a local restaurant that we all went to that uh, when we were in college and after college, uh, called Danny Sheehan's Steakhouse. It's got great great food, great steaks, but it's also got a really nice watering hole there. And it's one of those places like Cheers that is a lockport. People go there and you know each other. And so I spent a lot of time there back in the day. And then when I when I moved to Richmond and I moved out of town, they started coming to the games. They would all get first it was a bus. And then now it's they individually come in, and the number is, get, is getting bigger. So there's 70 tickets they bought today for the game. They buy the tickets. They're not getting comps. They're, buy, they're up in the, the nosebleeds, and they're, they're, fi they're fine with it, and they have a great time. They, they had a blast. They have a great time. Yeah. And, and, uh, so, and we're like, the, the, I don't know the record. I know they've been here somewhere between 17 and 20 times. And if they've been here 20 times, we're 19 and 1. Mm -hmm. And the only time we lost was when Syracuse won the national championship, and we were up. 18 in the first half on Syracuse on Carmelo Anthony, and it got away. We lost by 18. At West Virginia. At West Virginia. Yeah. We were up by 18 and a half, and we lost by 18. It's the only time uh, we lost, and you know why? Hmm. It was my birthday. That's why we lost. You, I, I don't think that's the reason, but I'll buy, at least you can buy them at that watering hole. I, I will do that. All right, good. All right, thanks. Michigan players scored in double figures last Sunday in Madison as the women's basketball team beat Wisconsin 76-70 for its first Big Ten road victory of the season. Freshman Nas Hillman led the winners with 20 points and 8 rebounds. Hi, my name is Nina. I am a one-year breast cancer survivor and starting at guard number one, Amy Dilk. Breast cancer survivors met with the team and announced Michigan's starting lineup before Thursday night's game at Chrysler Center against Nebraska. Freshman point guard Amy Dilk scored two early buckets before injuring her knee, which forced her to the sideline the rest of the night. But the Wolverines responded. Seeing my teammate go down, Amy, she's my roommate. That was hard. I mean, she's such a great leader, even as a freshman. And <clears throat> Munger even le leaned into me after a couple of turnovers and was like, next play. So I definitely wanted to fight for them. I know that they weren't going to give up on me, so why should I do that to them? Hillman and Akenray Johnson came off the bench and scored a combined 32 points to lead the way for Michigan, who led by three points at intermission. Nebraska took the lead late in the third quarter, but Michigan fought back. The Wolverine defense was the difference. Michigan held the Cornhuskers to just four points in the first nine and a half minutes of the final quarter to pull away to a 67-61 victory. That's three straight wins for Michigan. It was critical for other people to step up, and we had to grind it out, and we went on scoring droughts, but we got great defensive stops. We made plays down the stretch. We got some big steals down the stretch, and just a tremendous fourth quarter finish. Senior Hallie Thome scored eight points, and now sits just 16 points away from becoming the third woman in program history to reach 2,000 points. That could come on Sunday when the Wolverines travel to Penn State, or on Thursday when Michigan returns home to host Indiana at Chrysler Center. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Sarah Van Meter. Time for this week's DTE Performance of the Week. And they found the redemption they were looking for. Cool leaves half in the dust quickly into the front court. Allie Yield liver stamps it down. Michigan stays atop the Big Ten. This week's Al Rose Steel Iron Man of the Week, co-captain Charles Matthews, really carried Michigan to the second half win against Wisconsin, where he has scored 16 of its 18 after the break. And then earlier in the week against Rutgers, he also boasted 11 points and five rebounds. Charles Matthews, our Al Rose Steel Iron Man of the Week.
So big for Charles Matthews. Remember the first meeting against Wisconsin, he only had five points and only took five shots. When the co-captain's aggressive and contributing offensively, Michigan usually a lot better basketball team. This week, they will try and play even better at Penn State and home against Maryland. We'll have all the reaction and the recap, plus interviews with players and coaches next week on another edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. Hope you can join us then. Until then, have a great week, everybody, and go Blue.